configuration here? Yes. Okay. So once you have selected the slave configuration, sometimes defaultly the build will be pointing to the slave. In that yeah, case, that's... what you have to do is you mm -hmm. have to put the master specific where the build can be running. So can you just I am making you as a presenter show to me. So okay. you have to make that place as the master. So just put the name as M A S T E R. Then it will be working for you, I guess. Are you able to see my screen, Thunga? I guess no, right? Right now, yes. Okay. So this. Go to configuration. I will tell you. I don't have to see it. So just I will tell the answer. So. In the project yes. configuration. Yes, so if you want to check the change the project, then you need to go to that project configuration only. Okay, go down. Okay, restrict where this project can be there. It is there, you see. So in the description, general description, just go down once. Go down, hold on please. Yeah, okay, exactly. Click that. No, no. Restrict where the project, where this project can run. One, one second. It went black. Yeah, yeah. Here I have to give the CD project. Are you going to run this thing CI in CD, CD job? I mean... Are you going to run the things in a slave or this this machine? Uh, the, the CI... Yeah, the CI artifactory and CD, right? So CD I will be running in uh, the slave machine. But CI, Correct. I think we have to run it in slave machine, right? Correct. So here you have to put as master. Okay. You see? Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah. So since it is it is it is the it is the behavior of uh, Jenkins. Okay. But uh, it is not a original behavior. So sometimes it happens. Sometimes it may not. And you are the one lucky girl. It is happening yeah. for you. Because when I just uh, what you say un uninstall that de uh, deployment slave uh, thing, then this is working. The CI is working. But exactly. when once it is up and running, this is not working. Yeah, so it is getting confused. Which mother I have to choose? So I I have two mothers now. So which mother I have to choose? So one is my uh, small mother or other some something grandma, pinama, something like that. So you have to do that. So always try to if you have the slave master, slave and the master. So put master in your master build and slave. So give the name of the slave in the next one. Okay. Okay, Sunda. Okay, next. Yeah, that's all. And yeah, I have one more doubt. Just a moment, just a moment. I thought some I, I thought some big issue was going in uh, in my flat. So when I checked just outside, the uh, children are playing. I thought some there was some big fight is happening. You see the sound? They are shouting like anything. Okay, go ahead. Next. Yeah, I mean I guess this is a small one. Uh, whenever we try to install something, we give, just give sudo su hyphen right. That goes to the root folder. Okay. And I mean, mm. what is the basic difference between a root and a Ubuntu folder? I mean, I've googled it, it's but not a I root don't know. Folder, it is a user, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. It's so, Ubuntu user and the root user. I mean, in which context should we use both exactly? Now, what is the okay? When you are logging to your computer, Windows machine, so you are logging as administrator and you are logging as a shy, yeah, right? Yes. So what is the difference between both? 
Okay, admin has all the privileges and Sahitya has a few. Exactly. So the same thing, the answer for Sahitya, uh, the Ubuntu and the root user. So root user is called as a super user in the world. Okay. 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 So any kind of installation and uh, the big, uh, important commands, which is dangerous commands, so all those things are going to be triggered by the root, not by the user. Okay. Next. Yeah, that's all to the phones. Okay. So any other guys? So do you have doubts? No, this is same. Yes, same. Go ahead, Eman. Wi Fi is getting deployed into the uh, slave machine, and but when I try to open it in the browser, uh, with the password, it's not letting me open it in the browser. It is not letting me to open in your browser. So, yeah. Mm, okay. So, did you the download the, the deployment is getting succeeded then? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is okay. So, go to manage web app. Go to manage web app. Manager web app. So, there is a link, right? Last but one. Come. No, no. In this, yeah. Yeah. When I click it, it says. Username and password. It will be asked it, 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 it asks for uh, admin and password. Correct. Yes. You do it even now. when I give it, it's not letting me go again. Okay, give it. it. It's waiting for me. See, yes. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so go to your deployment uh, deployment uh, job. Go to your deployment job in Jenkins. Go to the view of Jenkins. Yes, show me the deployment job. CD demo. Sorry, demo CD. Yes. Just. No, not in console output. I don't want console output. I want to uh, go to the configuration, yes. Configure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, go, go up, wait. So the user admin, that's fine, so, okay. So this is fine, so, this is fine, that's fine, so, okay, come down, come down, I say, come down, come down, 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 overwrite the file, yes, you have did it. So, go up. Go up, wait, um, uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so go to the deployment server first of all, go to the deployment server, it's going this to be the deployment server, yes, okay, correct, good, so now put ls, Okay, you you ls hyphen ld. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so go to the place CD hyphen etc tomcat CD not hyphen it is slash etc sorry slash etc slash tomcat8 put tab it will be working for you enter yes put ls and open a file tomcat user.xml tab yes good uh -huh. and the password it should be very good okay so okay so come out okay so execute this command app get app get uh, app hyphen get it is not app get so app hyphen get so space install install tomcat tomcat8 hyphen admin admin yes enter enter yeah so again type the up arrow up arrow just type up arrow and remove the admin and put user module enter Okay, so it's also done. Okay, so just restart the Tomcat. Just restart the Tomcat. Just not like this. So service restart. Service. Type service. C R V A C E. Tomcat eight. Tomcat eight. Restart. Did you try to do this manually? Enter. No, sir. Okay. Enter. Okay. So now in the meantime, go to your browser and clear your cache. Control H and clear the things. Yeah. So delete the history and cookies, everything. Just click uh, for past two days or one day, something like that. Time, let me try to try the browser one more. Yeah, reload. Yeah, reload the browser and check it. So everything you have to enter now. So maybe you just type the Tomcat uh, Tomcat URL again. Okay. <coughs> In my opinion, you should have typed the username and password wrongly. That's it. Not more than that. Yeah, that's what because I said. everything is normal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the passwords look everything is same. Everything is good. But mm -hmm. I tried it. So whatever the process, yeah, whatever whatever the process you did is good only. So that should not be an issue. Yeah, well, I can see it in the browser. The files got copied. Everything is here. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So so that, that is what, so the thing is, even the Tomcat homepage is coming for you, so if it is not opening, that means uh, there is a, you might use some, some password wrongly. Yes, if you are yeah. doing only this, then when you will complete this? Okay, Rakesh came today, he didn't came yesterday, okay. So type slowly, admin, password. Something issue was. Yes, on the right got his I server. Know. 
Yeah, what is that? Then? So he just, he just need to give Tomcat users. He just need to replace Tomcat Tomcat users dot XML file. Instead of that, he just did Tomcat user. So the default okay. is. Yes, it has to be yes, correct. So Tomcat ah, the spelling is wrong. Oh my God, yes, yes, correct. Very good. Good catch. Go to etc. Actually, go to yeah. You see, it is there is Tomcat users dot xml is there and user dot xml is there. Actually, you yes. rename. What you do is you just do rm if an rf. Do it very clearly and uh, I wait for my green light. Yes. So space Tomcat user space Tomcat tab put tab don't press enter. No no no. Understand we are going to remove some file and you are not giving the file name which is there in the directory which is basically the basic is shaking the Linux commands. Remove user. Yeah now type tab. Go to yeah so yeah so now Tomcat uh, yes put yes yes dot yes dot xml yes so enter okay mv 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 command move space just type tomcat and press tab. M spelling is wrong. Yeah. Double M is there. Tomcat spelling wrong. Yeah. Tomcat. Tab. Yes. Put again tomcat and tab. Tab. Yes. So instead of R, after R you put yes. So users yes. Put the name yes. Yes. Yeah. So XML, correct? Yes. So something the user user is not good. So then can you just see the user access head? Uh, CH mod for this. So just put CH mod. The user access is not good for Tomcat, I guess. So put the command CH mod. Give the good permission to it. Seven 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 for Tomcat user dot XML. Delete it. So delete the command, delete the command I say, whatever you type. So you need to type the command chmod. Type the command chmod. Delete this command. Okay, so delete this command and uh, type chmod. I'm trying to just a hold on. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So chmod. Chmod mod uh, yeah mm, put tomcat here tab shouldn't we out I should get out of the tomcat no no tomcat ah yes yes correct tomcat tab tab uh, what is this uh, mister who is this Heyman I am asking you to put tab you are not no 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 Heyman, you need to change the user access for one file. How you will do it in Linux? This is the simple question. Okay. So use Tomcat chmod. Please do what I say. Please type Tomcat uh, chmod. Okay. Just to put triple seven space triple seven triple seven space Tomcat users dot or in this case you can also put star. This is what I told you. Enter. LS. Yeah, the color changed. Good. So now execute, it will be working for you. So in the in the in the Jenkins file, so put the name of the Tomcat user as the users. That's it. It will be working for you. 
that's fine. You can do that later, but now you can try it manually how it works. Yeah. So here in the user, no, yeah, file should path you can maybe change it. File path. The Tom, the name of this file is wrong. You have created a file, right? Yes. Yeah. The name of the file is wrong. So this is what we are trying to tell you from two minutes. This one. Yes. Right. That. That's it. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So now you try it will be working. Yeah, try it. So yeah. admin and type password. No, no, it is correct. Okay. Yeah, type it. Yeah. Do I have to restart or can, can I just try it? Yes, try it. No, not required to restart. No need. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have changed the user.xml, right? Then restart. But normally not required, so it's not worth taking. Do it then. Put up arrows. Yes. Okay, it will be working. So next question. So what? What other guy is uh, other guy is having? So any issues you are facing like this? Nobody will just ask me yeah. because I will shout on them. So that's the reason I know about <laughs> oh, guys. Rakesh Garu, what is what is happening here, Rakesh? Yeah, I got the output. You got it, but did you practice it? I want a CACD. I have given assignment. So CACD, do, do we have the CACD on the place? Oh, just give me one minute. Okay. Fine. In the meantime, so I guess one is one minute. That's fine. So, Siddharth, what happened? So, are you getting the points? I am sure that you may not have get it. So, are you getting the points actually? No answer from Siddharth. Okay, fine. So, Chetan, I cannot ask questions to Chetan. Vikram, what about you? Is it going fine? Chetan, is it going fine? Hi, Sundar. Uh, I was struggling in Mavin only, Sundar. Because I, I started practicing yesterday. So I, when I got out, I called to Vikram and I verified. But uh, in some, I need uh, about the Java applications. I didn't get that in. Uh, okay, so how to can, uh, clone into, uh, Yeah, how to clone into okay, you, GitHub. Okay, so your case is separate. So what I will do is I will deal with you separately. Okay, leave it. Okay, okay. Just to listen, whatever you are getting, 32, 20 percent, whatever you are getting, just get it. That's it. Okay. So we will take care because you missed the classes, right? So it will be difficult. Just, uh, okay, sir. Thank you. For you to be very difficult. I understand. Fine. So. Okay. So here it is going to be. You see, guys. Okay, it is working for you, Heman. Very good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So now, what is going to happen? Just a moment. Yeah. So what about uh, chess? So did you practice the chess? So how far it is going, and uh, what should I do with the chess? So how can I continue the? new one or should I need to tell the old one to you? What should I do now? Guys? Sundar Mahindra here. Yes, Mahindra. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I had practiced Shift too. Okay, so the bootstrap is working for you? Yeah, it worked work for me. It worked very good. Fine. So for everyone, did you understand the bootstrap process of Chef? Guys, so did you understand the bootstrap process of Chef or should I need to show you again? So this is my question. I understood. You understood? Okay. So what about others? So just tell me frankly, you want one more time, no issue or otherwise we can just move further. What shall we do? 
Actually, I got one more doubt. Okay, what is that? So this is what I want. What is that? Yeah, while we are while we are connecting the bootstrap, we'll be entering a uh -huh. SSH, right? The SSH, we will be? SSH user and everything. We'll be hmm. on the hmm. ID. So your voice is very low for me. I could not able to hear you properly. Yeah, while we are while we are connecting the bootstrap, we'll be giving the ID, right? No boss, I don't understand your question, so your voice is very low for me. Previously it was good, when you are starting it was good. Yeah, go ahead. So for me, Rakesh voice is low or for everyone the Rakesh voice is low guys? Slow or Sundar? Okay, yeah, that is what. Rakesh, previously you started well, but after that your voice got voice got diminished. Yeah, Sundar, this is Rakesh from Kiran's, Kiran's login. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the 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 knife bootstrap the ID which I, which I am seeing on a notepad now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that the ID we should be entering every time when we are connecting the bootstrap or there is a, is there any other way to enter there? No, how many times you are going to bootstrap? One mission. So actually we are, we will be stopping the instance, right? So when, when we restart the instance, the host address, uh, oh, I got that, I got that, sorry. Mm. You got we'll it right. We'll so the yeah, host we'll address we'll is we'll going to be changed. Yes, and we'll the private IP and public IP will not be changed. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I told this also. Okay. Uh, I think for you guys I have not told. So today morning I have told this to someone else. Okay, fine. So for to answer your question, it will not be changed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so everybody got the bootstrap, okay. So you guys are not going to tell, I know about that. So people will be trembling to do that. So what I will do is just I am going to do it again once quickly and go for one more recipe today. We are going to see one recipe today how to do that. Mm, Pranita is there, so what what is going Pranita? So what you what do you you want any help? So, did you got any help from others? Again, we could not able to hear you, Ranita. You were talking something, but we could not able to hear you as yesterday. Please correct it. Okay. What I do is, you see, so this is going to be my uh, workstation, Chef workstation. So, this is going to be my Chef server. So, which is my uh, uh, Chef uh, hosted server is going to be here. What I'm going to do is, so this is my deployment node. So I'm just going to either connect to my node first. So let it be, I will connect to my node. So PowerShell, yes. And in this case, what I'm going to do here is, so, yeah. So what is a bootstrap is nothing but just I will tell you. So MS Paint. Okay. So I have my Chef server, sorry, Chef workstation, and you have my Chef uh, server, and you have your Chef node. So this is what architecture. So you can have a lot of nodes. So in this case, this is going to be the workstation. Okay. And this is going to be your uh, hosted Chef. It's going to be hosted Chef. Okay. And this is going to be your uh, nodes. Okay. So when one, once you do this one, okay. So this is going to be connected. So this is going to be connected together, and this is going to be connected together. So if you want to do any commands from the such a hosted server, which is not possible. For that, what we are going to do is we are going to do all the commands by using workstation. The command to do that is called as a knife command. Okay, so the knife is the way that you have, you can interact with this, all these things. Okay, if you want to connect these things, so this process is called as a bootstrap. 
So bootstrap is nothing but technically it will push a small chip client software into the nodes. So that the node will become after the bootstrapping, the client will be client software is getting pushed into the node and the node will become the chip compliant node. Okay. So this is the process called bootstrap. So to do this bootstrap, so this we need to connect first of all the chip server and the workstation by using the starter kit that is called as STAFTE uh, starter starter kit. Okay, the starter kit. So the starter kit is nothing but chip starter kit will be there in your chip server. Okay. So in your chip server it will be there. The chip starter kit will be there. So it is called as a managed managed chip. So it will be there in the managed chip IO. Managed chip IO, you see. So this is a place where you, you are having it. So now what you need to do is you see my nodes are already there. So you see in the administration you will you have created the organization and this is the starter kit. If you have downloaded the starter kit, what, what will be there in the starter kit is nothing but your chef repository. Okay. So inside the chef it will be the chef repository will be there, copy from the starter kit and paste it here. And here there is a link between your so here there is a link between your hosted chef server and the workstation. So this uh, the laptop and your workstation is getting connected by using a configuration call knife.rb in this one so every all the urls and whatever it is there it is there okay so then what you can do easily you can just connect from one, one place to other place okay so this is the idea of connecting between this hosted server and the workstation and now we need to connect our chef server and the node so how it is by bootstrap so what is the command that you have for, what is the node first of all the node is this one you see this is the EC2 node. So this is going to be the deployment node. For example, now what we are going to do is we are just going to bootstrap our Jenkins machine. Okay. So connect our Jenkins machine by using bootstrap. So what we can do, so first of all, what is the bootstrap command that we have to use is nothing but this is the one. So first knife bootstrap and the private IP. So what is the private IP of this? We don't know, so we have to check it. So what is my private IP of this one? So this is going to be my private IP, right? So this is going to be my private IP. So I'm just taking this private IP with me. Okay. So I need to paste my private IP first of all. And it is going to be the DNS name. So what is the DNS name? So it is going to be the Ubuntu at the rate user, right? So this is my DNS name, which is my name of the server that I have to take it. So I'm just taking this one. Okay. And after that, what is happening here is so oh, I'm just the user is going to be Ubuntu user, U-B-U-N-T-U, Ubuntu user, and I'm just going to say the AWS key as my firm file, AWS underscore key. Why? Because if I want to connect to this machine, I need to use my firm key, right? So where is my firm key? The firm key is there inside my, so I have put inside the directory which I am going to trigger this command. So where is the directory? This is the directory which the command is going to be executed. So in this place I have put my files. Okay. After that what I did is I just put some name. So it is going to be my Jenkins server. Okay. So the Jenkins server. So if you want to install even a Jenkins also by chef, you can do it. Okay. No, nobody is going to stop you. So this can be a Jenkins server. So what I am doing is I am just putting the name as a Jenkins server. Okay. So have it. And inside the Jenkins server you can do whatever you want now. So now what I am going to do here is I am just going to say this command. Okay. So inside my chef repository I am just going to execute this command. You see the knife bootstrap and this command is getting executed now. So this process is called bootstrap which connects between the servers. So between this architecture, the chef architecture is going to be connected by using this bootstrap. And the command which is connecting is nice and the trunk card here is the starter kit. And the star you have to download the starter kit and inside the starter kit knife.rb is the file which talks about this connection. Okay. So now it got connected. So once it is getting connected, now you understand so you can just go in our chef server and see in my chef server you can just see now the nodes will be three nodes will be there you see 
Jenkins is there. So which I have showed you yesterday on that time. So what is the deployment? So this is the deployment node. This is my Jenkins and this is something which is a my other node. Okay. So <coughs> so three nodes are there now. But if you see here for this node there is no run list. The run list is the place where the instruction you are going to give for the chef. So the chef is going to have the run list from this place. So what is this run list? So this is a run list. What, what is the run list? Run list is going to have the cookbook. So what is the cookbook? Cookbook is going to have the recipe. So what is the recipe? Recipe is going to have the resource. And what is the resource? Any instruction which you are going to do. So what is the maximum work you are going to do with the chef? You are going to install some software, right? Install some package. So what you will do? You will go. You will going to install some package. Okay. Package. You are going to install. Uh, make the package as a service. Make the package as a service. And you are going to install a file. So each and everything is a resource for the chef. The package is a resource. Service is a resource. And the file is a resource. So each and every thing which you are going to do with the chef is going to be the resource. Okay, so the group of resources combined together to form the recipe. And the recipe is packaged and that recipe is called as a cookbook. That's it. Same concept will be there in the puppet also. Here the cookbook what you will be calling as a manifest, not recipe. So the recipe is called as a manifest. And the cookbook, so again the resource is going to be called as a resource only here in the puppet. And you are, call, you are going to call this as a module. It is, it is a chef cookbook and there it is going to be the puppet module. Okay, so this is called as a, there it is called as a master slave agent. Okay, master agent concepts, agent. So this is called as a workstation here. The, here it is called as a three-tier architecture, there it is only two-tier architecture. Okay, so this is a puppet master and that is a puppet agent. That's it. So uh, this is the this is a different most probably the architecture difference between the chef and puppet. But right now we will concentrate on chef. Okay, fine. Up to this is it clear? So now we need to create the run cookbook. So what is the template of the cookbook? We will see. So what we are going to do is we are just going to create K N I knife cookbook. G E N E R A T E generate. So what is the name of the cookbook? The name of the cookbook is going to be Demo Shiva, something like that. Or I need to specify it. That's fine. So you see now the cookbook is getting created. So where the cookbook will be created? Inside the default folder called cookbook. Okay, uh, it is not created, it is thrown an error to me. It is throwing an error. Okay. So it is not cookbook generate, I forget about it. So it is create cookbook. Okay. Uh, I am combining I am combining some uh, puppet options with this, so that's the reason. So the syntax is wrong. Create cookbook. Okay, knife create cookbook. Mm -hmm. Again, it is throwing an error to me. So, nice cookbook create or create cookbook? I'm not sure about it. So, let me check. So, here it will be throwing an error to me. So, nice roll cookbook node environment data. Yeah. So, it is cookbook create. It is not create cookbook. It is cookbook create. It's going to be cookbook. See, create. Don't chat with the things guys, so listen to the class. Okay, I think now it got created. So let's see now. So you see Demo Shiva, the cookbook got created correctly. So inside the cookbook you will be having the recipe. Okay, so this is a default place where you need to write your all the instruction. Okay, 
the recipe is the place where you need to write all your instruction. It is called as a default.rb. So everything is going to be a Ruby file. Okay, the format and the syntax, whatever you are going to write, is going to be in a Ruby format. But don't uh, afraid about it. So it is nothing. So you will not directly write any recipe. So whatever it is, the recipe you are going to download the recipe. Okay. So first we will try to download some recipe, good recipe from the internet. Okay. So check, 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 check. so file recipe or file resource. So let's say file resource. I resource chef. Okay. Example. So everything is going to be the resource for me now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some resource. You see, I'm just creating a file. Okay, and this is the content of the file. And uh, you are even telling who is the group and the owner of this file. Okay, so I'm just creating a file in the place. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a file. Okay, so I'm just creating a file and it is going to be some HTML content and it is going to be something which as a file which I am going to create is this one. But uh, what I would say, yeah, yeah, okay, let me create it. And the owner and the group and all, I don't have to mention about it. So the owner and the group and all, okay, let it be like this, no issue. Let's see whether everything is getting changed or not. Okay, so this is one of the resource which is the very important resource of the chef is going to be file. Okay, let's say you want to put some some content or some configuration, okay, like this. So this kind of configuration, this mode and the file, everything. So this is the first configuration management uh, resource that you need to understand. So if you want to maintain the wide configuration in all the servers, okay, all the servers, this kind of same configuration should be maintained in any point of time, whenever there is a deployment. So it means that so there can be a lot of files will be changed manually by the tester or the production or by the user in the server while you are testing or while you are working on the environment. But once everything is done, when there is a new de deployment is going to happen, so all your things should be in par, in, at par with each other. So you have to maintain the similar configuration with all the guys. So in this case, what you will be doing here is, so whenever you are just so you can also you can also just put the content like this also. So you have you have the things right. So I just need to do this Jeff Jeff cookbook. So it's a starter. No, I don't know where my Jeff other other cookbooks gone. So something is gone. Okay, fine. So you see whatever we are going to just put it. So. We can just put this also in this one. So, so we have a Jenkins server, right? Okay. First of all, we will just go with this resource, and after that, we will just elaborate it. Okay. So first of all, I need to just install a file in the particular place, and I just want to put the content, and I want to put the modify owner. So this is a static thing that I want to put it in the server while the deployment is happening. So in this case, what you can do is you just create the cookbook. And I have created the cookbook to this. And what you need to do is knife cookbook upload. Okay, so I just want to upload the cookbook. Upload. Okay, knife cookbook upload. And where should I do this? So repo, it should be there inside the cookbook. Okay, first of all, I will go inside the cookbooks. And here I just want to upload the cookbook. So what is that? Knife cookbook upload. So it means that directly it is going to be uploaded upload. You see this cookbook is going to be uploaded to my chat server. If you are uploading this into the chat server then only I can use this for my deployment. Otherwise I cannot. So once this cookbook is getting uploaded, so once let's say it is uploaded successfully, okay. So now what we can do here is you just go to this place and see the policy, okay. Or you can just see the notes, okay. So first what we will do is in our server, which is a deployment server, 
or in the Jenkins server. Let's say it's a Jenkins server because deployment uh, deployment server may not also have it. That's fine. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to put some edit run list, and you see the available recipe is this is one of the recipe which is available. So I'm just dragging it and putting in the run list, and save this run list. So whenever I'm just logging to this machine now, so whenever I'm just whenever I'm just logging to this machine, okay. So what is this machine? It is going to be the demo node deployment node for the test. Okay. So what will happen here is we are just going to run our chef recipe. So now you can just go and check which is the place where we have created the file. Now first of all we have to execute it, right? So sudo and after this what I am going to do is I am just going to say chg features client. So I am just running the command. So it means that I am doing the deployment in this machine. So I am doing some deployment on this machine by using the chef client command. So this deployment will be called by the Jenkins machine as the CACD one. Okay. So it is just scolding me. Something it is getting scolded. Okay. I don't know why. So what is that? The user ID web admin is not found. You see? Yeah. I uh, that is a stupid mistake that we have it. He, like this, the user will not be there actually. Web admin like that. Okay. So what we have to do here is you have to modify your content and again upload it. So recipe, so the recipe I don't want this one. So more is that fine. More can be like this. And you can also put 777. Okay, the so more can be anything. So First of all, we need to upload this file now again. Okay. So I'm just uploading it again. So once it is uploaded, we will execute it again. It's uploading, you see? It, it got uploaded here. Now what we will do is we will just execute this. Just client and we will see whether it is getting executed successfully or not. <coughs> Again, it is throwing an error and does not exist. The parent directory, the, the parent directory is not exist. You see, the directory is not at all there. So we need to do something which is there existing one. Okay. So what we have to do because we are the automatic thing is create. Okay. So the automatic thing is create only, right? So it is not taking. So it has to create this. So let me put it in the right way. Okay, so what we will do is maybe the permission issue will be there next. So we have to see all those things. So where lib Jenkins? No, it's not Jenkins, so it is going to be Tomcat. Okay, so I can just touch it, touch anything. Yes. So L does open LD. Okay, everybody should have an access to this folder. So in this case, let's see. Let's see what's happening. Again, I am just uploading the change to check, check uh, cookbook. Okay. 
this time we will see while we are deploying what is the thing that's happening. So it itself it's telling there is a exception so unexpected keyword. So what is the unexpected keyword which I have mentioned? Is it something wrong? So what I have missed, nothing is there, right? Everything is good only. Okay. Sundar, I guess the problem is with the single inverted comma you are placing. No, it should be there, right? It should be there, right here. Here it is, the comma is there, so I am just closing it. Ah, I am missing the do here. It should be do, right? Do and end. So I think somewhere I have missed it, so maybe that's the reason. I think it should be there, I guess. Wait, let me check. It's a syntax error. You see, yeah, do. I am missing the do. That is the problem. Do is a syntax. It's a Ruby syntax. So it's a block, actually, Ruby block. Do and the end is nothing but the Ruby block. Okay. You are just putting the command. So the command is nothing but the resource here. And it is going to be the do and the end. So now it will be working for me. So like this, sometimes we do, we used to do the mistakes. So we have to correct it by ourselves. Okay, it's getting uploaded now. So now we will see while we are deploying it, what is happening. So you see, we'll deploy this by using chef client command now. So let's see, it might be permission issue this time now. Yeah, it, it, it ran successfully. So now you can just go and check in that just uh, I can just do the cat itself you see the content is stored so this is a, just a very small example of the deployment that you can do by using the chef okay so this is a very small cookbook and uh, you have just upload the cookbook into the run list and you are executing that in the deployment node got the point hmm? You have any doubts in this place? In this, up to this, what I have told you? Sundar, why do we need Chef if we can do this job in using Jenkins itself? See, that is what I told you, right? The similarity and the complexity is getting increased. Means, see, for example, you cannot just check the. For example, if you are to, talking about the package HTTPD package, okay, it is common for everything okay if you want to make something a web web, web uh, machine okay so if you want to do create a web machine in the in your environment immediately means you can use the chef and you you will be having the predefined set of recipes it is like a script or an image just run the image on the server and whatever the prerequisite software and the configuration for your company will be ready which is not possible by using Jenkins Okay, everything and everywhere it has to be maintained and it is the Jenkins is only see the thing is everything is even possible by using the manual work even Jenkins is not required even a shell script can do this work even a shell or Python or a, a con or bash any script can also do the work whatever we are working in this uh, in this environment but the thing is uniformity is more important okay so the that's the reason. So even we can, I don't want Chef. I can do this thing with the, in the Docker also. So again, it's uh, again the same thing, which is going to be a culture that is going to be used in a company. Okay. So you can create the environment. For example, it, it, it should be only working in the production environment or the testing environment. And uh, you can club the servers together. And uh, you can do the deployment. So in a one shot. So this is the... Uh, standardized place of doing your infrastructure conf uh, configuration because what will happen here is 
while the tester is testing the environment, what he will do is he will be changing the port number. For example, he will be changing the port number for the various reasons. Okay, and like that, the build will be if the build if if the uh, for example, there will be a flag. A lot of configuration flag will be there in the production and the testing environment. If the flag is one, the application will behave in such a way. And flag is zero means it will be behaving in such a way. For example, if you are not having such kind of configuration management tool in the place to maintain the uniformity, so the the engineer is forgetting to just put back the revoke the things whatever he has changed it. And while the next deployment is happening, the deployment will only do the application, but deployment will not change the configuration files every time. It will not make sure it. Okay, so the problem here will be you will be losing the configuration. So, but if you are using such kind of any kind of the configuration management in your company, so you can preserve the changes. So you cannot sorry you don't have to preserve the changes. You don't care about it. All the changes will be freshly made into the server every time. So this is the reason that why we are going for either Chef and Puppet or a, even Ansible also. Anything is going to be for the same use. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any other doubt? Sundar Mahendra here. Yes. Um Sundar, uh, we've got a couple of doubts. First thing we are, I mean, by by using Bootstrap, we are connecting the uh, you know, workstation server and then the node, right? Technically, work server and the node. Yeah, technically server. And the node. How to undo it? In the sense, how to unlink them? Uh, there is something uh, command for that. Uh, to I'm not I'm not exactly know the syntax of that command, but. Uh, you can unlink that command in the bootstrap also. Okay. In the knife command, there is a command to do that. I forget the command of the knife. So it is a knife command. So maybe I will just check this knife until you wait. So here itself it will be there. So yeah, knife delete node will be there. I bootstrap is there, right? So like this, that node deletion will don't just delete the things. You see, knife tag delete. No, no, no. Knife node delete. Some delete command is there. I am sure about it. But you cannot just delete the things node for it like that. So in inside that uh, chip server. So properly you have to un un unlock the things. Mm -hmm. You see, knife node delete. This command can be used. Okay. And uh, you can also check uh, the list of the nodes also. Node list, knife node list, K N I F E knife node list. I think it will be coming as a uh, honey sundar thirty. I guess. Wait, let's see. Yeah, it's saying three nodes for you, right? Yeah. Hmm? You can delete one of this node also. And uh, one more thing, while uploading the cookbooks, mm -hmm. it, I mean, like by default, they'll get overrated. Yes, for sure. Okay. Otherwise, you will be in a trouble. So understand one thing. Mm -hmm. Here, the problem will be it is in a real time. What you will be assigning? See, it will be like this. So if you have two cookbooks, okay. So, for example, if you are going to assign the cookbook, for example, you, you are going to assign this demo Shiva is having three versions, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It means that you are, it is against the configuration rule, okay, first of all. Okay. The configuration management rule should have, this is one of the configuration for the server. So, once you are saying that it is a... You can create the same, so if you want any difference, you can create a other recipe for it. Okay. And name it is the other way, but uh, don't don't uh, make a for the same recipe inside the server, not, not server. 
Okay, so you can just drag and put it here. And I don't know whether it fit is the version one, two, three. Everybody will be using different version, and it is going to be the mesh again. Okay. Okay. So normally, how the chef will be working here is, see, for example, if we need to create a, a web server. Okay. So what do you want? You need a Java, and you need a Tomcat, and you need some configuration file. Okay. Mm -hmm. To do that, so you might in a company you might have three web server for the testing environment, three for the development environment, three for the production. So in this case, you can configure all those things and you can make the things into your different things. You can create the role for the server, you can create the environment for the server, particular server. So everything you can do it. So these are all the reason why the chef is required in your company. If you want to. Maintain the large orchestration of your servers. Okay, so which can be easily done through the chess. Okay. Okay. Fine. So that's it. So we will see tomorrow with a few more examples of chess, and I, we will be discussing about the resources. So how to create the chess? How to write the chess? Uh, what is that? Yes. Chess cookbook. So more chess cookbooks. Okay, deployment is nothing. Just you are going to write the deployment uh, command. That's it. But writing cookbooks and implementing the cookbooks are more important than deployment. Okay. Sina. Yes. Go ahead. I mean, two three general doubts basically. See the. I mean, like while we are getting any error like uh, regarding permissions, we are directly changing the uh, permissions like ch more minus or triple mm. seven. Mm. Are we allowed to do the same in the real time environment? See, real-time environment. First of all, you will design and you will do it, right? Yeah. So you will be designing. What is the user? See, first of all, you cannot just say say that uh, we will not do in the inorganized way, unorganized way like this. Okay. Okay. So if if you are not having that one, so you have to properly request your Linux administrator mm -hmm. to give the permission for the particular user. Okay. Or otherwise, you can just go with the sudo your access for the particular user. Okay. okay. So these are all the two ways in a real time that you will be doing. Most probably, sudo your access they will not be giving, but if you are owner of the server, they will be using the sudo your access. And once you have the sudo your access, you can do anything as a root also. But okay. normally, they will be just trying to create the right and the right permission for you. As a group, so in the group they will be giving the right access and read access and execute access, so you can do anything on that one. So which means that but we see it more or all you cannot execute directly. Okay, so it means that we'll have the permissions. We will not face this uh, issue. Major. You will not face this issue. Majorly you issue. will not face yeah. this issue. Okay. But for sure, you you will face some permission issue. So if you are working on one month mm -hmm. uh, in different issues, one issue will be for sure permission issue will be there. Okay. And okay. so if you are creating a new one, yes. Okay. And so there, uh, you know, this is like much broad uh, question. Like, what is the naming convention that will happen in, uh, uh, you know, when we work? How the naming convention goes? Like, how we name the files and all those? Naming convention will be going with the application name exactly. So everything should be named with the application name. Application name and the version. So whatever the product and the yeah yeah application name. Whatever product, for example, if I'm using for a, some product called customer service management, okay CRM, okay. Mm -hmm. So it will be saying that uh, CRM underscore the module, which is going to be CRM underscore module and the name. So it's going to be like that. And CACD means CRM underscore project CI. CRM underscore project CD, and it is going to be the artifactory means. Artifactory push for CRM project. So like this, everything will be like this. Okay, including for, right from the Git. If Git will be just having the CRM. That's it. Okay. CRM dot Git customer service uh, customer relationship management. That's it. So Git like this. So everything will be named in the product name. Okay. Okay, Sundar. That's it. Okay.
and the configuration for in the companies, everything will be set up or do we have to start from scratch? We go all the time. If it is unfortunate that if you go, if you need to go on setup, and if it is already there, means you are fortunate. And most probably it will be there in your company. Most probably it will be there in your company. And if you it is not there and you have to set up, means you should be going as an architect. So which normally will not happen. See, maximum they will be asking you to generate a new CI/CD proof flow. This is what you, they will be asking you to do. But normally the flow will be there, so you can just copycat by using the other flow. This is what people are doing in US also. While they are looking, giving the requirement itself, they are giving the requirement, yeah, please create this flow by seeing this flow. So this is what they are giving. So at that time, you don't have to, just you need to understand your project rather than the technical <coughs> of the project. Okay. So answer your question directly. Normally, it will be there in your company. No, yeah, I was just wondering how it will be in day-to-day -day life as a DevOps. Yeah. In my company, it is starting from the scratch. So I am designing from the day one how the things yes. should work. Yeah, you are an architect, but we are not. Right? Uh, yes, it happens to be. It is a big headache for me now. Okay. Nothing is working. Daily I am facing new issues. I, I don't know how I am handling it. Today I faced the issue in Artifactory. Not today, two days. See, Artifactory I need to just, I, everything is working fine. But the problem here is, uh, I need to connect my Artifactory to my LDAP server. So which I have deleted. And everything is authentication is going fine. And I have deleted for the Jenkins also. It is going fine. But the problem here is, the automatic syncing, right? The user should be what whomever the user is there in the LDAP server should be automatically down imported to the imported to the uh, what is that? To my artifactory. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Artifactory. Some matrix is there. Compare my artifactory pro compare matrix. Comparison matrix. Okay, I will tell you. Yes. So, I uh, we are not aware of it. So we have installed this version. So which is OSS, which is an open source software. Okay. So this is what what we are doing and what we are working on it. Right. But the problem here is. I just want to see, it is a stupidity that what they have given us. So, the LDAP connection is working, the integration of the LDAP is working fine, but the syncing with syncing the user is not working yet. So, they have said no to that. I will tell you why. It will be there like LDAP. LDAP. See, LDAP authentication is there. Okay, LDAP authentication is there with both the guys. So if you are authenticating the LDAP, then you need to allow the user to be visible, right? So you see the LDAP group synchronization. So the whomever the, the users in the group, okay, is not getting synchronized if I'm using this uh, normal op open source mm -hmm. thing. So they have given only in pro version, right? So if I want to go with the pro version, then again I need to go to my management and ask money for it and they will they will kill me, which is not possible now. So this is the issues that you will be facing in a real time exactly. More often. Okay, not, not more often. So if it is if you are going to set up, you don't know what is the issue is going to come. Because directly you will not think how to connect to more, connect to your LDAP servers. So you will be seeing all the other cases, how you can just put the things, uh, get the things, all those things. Almost everything is there, whatever I want, the things which is there in the open source. And it is not there in the newer one. That is a problem. Okay. So th this kind of issues are having like that. So for this you don't know what you what I am going to do. So immediately what I did, I cannot say to my customer and say no, it is not possible. So what I have did? So manually I will create the users, no issue, I will create the user, I will create the user manually 
and I will just give some common use to the company. Instead of that 330 users, I will be creating only 30 users and giving to the common use that team. So because the artifactory is going to be used by my application and if any issues are there, then the quality or the audit team is going to just view the uh, thing. So everybody is not going to view the my binaries. So this is what one issue that I am facing. So And one more issue is there. Okay, Connecting the Git Jenkins with the Solaris machine, so which is a nightmare and Sun Solaris is not working. Okay, so Sun Solaris is the it is having a non-interactive shell. So that non-interactive shell is not working because uh, I need to see if I am just using this. Uh, wait, I will be telling you the issue. Sun Solaris, uh, Sun Solaris, Jenkins. Git clone is not working. Breaks. Okay, no you use Jenkins to work with the that is uh, this one. Okay. So this is what it is not working actually. The thing if it will be working if you are using the Cloud B services. What is a Cloud B is nothing but again the enterprise version of Jenkins. But we are not using enterprise version of Jenkins. We are using the open source machine. So this is a problem. And uh, normally, if you are just checking this, so normally when we are cloning the things from the Jenkins, it is working right. But uh, when we are doing in the Solaris machine, it will not work. Because when you are logging to the server, Okay, when just I am logging to my server, any server, just I am logging in, right? So, if I am saying, I am just seeing my shell, I am seeing my shell now. So, if I am putting this one, so echo dollar shell, okay, echo dollar shell, I am having my interactive shell here, actually. So, this is my interactive shell. The git bash is my interactive shell. If I am just putting the id command, so the user is root, right? So if I'm just tell, if I'm just gripping the things root from my etc etc password. So this file. So it's going to be my interactive shell. This is going to be. I have a shell, and this is going to be interactive shell. But in the in the um, in the Solaris, while you are logging to the server. So when I'm trying to do the clone here. Okay, if I'm typing the git command, it has to recognize my git, right? It will not be recognizing because there is no interactive shell. It doesn't know where the git is there, so it is not a, it is not a, it is not a workable solution. So what you have to do is you have to give like this: usr, usr mm, bin something like that. So usr bin and git. So like this. Okay, so. Normally, I don't know. I don't know how it, it it will be working. So here, the problem here is. So, so the problem here is the git clone. Okay, this git clone is not working now. Okay. We'll be having the git clone, right? So while you are cloning it, it is saying that the origin not found, and I could not able to do it. So in this case, what I have to do, so I am just running that as a command and manually I am just fetching the things. So these are all the difficulties that you have to decide while you are, before you are setting the project. Okay, so these are all the things which I have not calculated it before, eight months. So now I am suffering it, suffering for that. So only mistake I have did with only the Jenkins and Artifactory. I should have bought a Bamboo, which is the paid version of Jenkins or Cloud B. And the artifact I need to get the paid version. So rest of everything I went for the good uh, good uh, tool. But now this only tool that I have missed it, and now I am suffering with that. So this kind of issues will be there while you are setting the things really. Okay. So okay, fine. So like this, we can tell lot of issues. So but uh, few things will be there like this.
Okay, guys. So if you don't have questions, so I will wind up and see you tomorrow on the same time. Bye bye. Thank you so much.